In general, what I love about channels is this. I don't have to do much thinking, right? I don't have to do much thinking because I know where the highs are, I know where the lows are, and all I have to do is wait for the market to break. That's it. That's it. I mean, I got to know how to get involved, my reason for entry. But as far as like analysis goes, I love channels because all I have to do is that. Now, the location doesn't matter. You have to make sure there, you know, if we break to the downside, is there room to go lower? If we break to the upside, is there room to go higher? But in general, right, these consolidations kind of, they tell their own story. Now, you could be aggressive. And, and, and again, this is where the other analysis comes into play. You could be aggressive and try to, <clears throat> excuse me, get involved in a channel prior to the break. But these are simple, right? In this scenario, we broke out to the upside. So what is our bias? Bullish or bearish? Bullish bias. So now we wait for the retest, right? We wait for the break above, close above. We wait for the retest and we treat it like a pullback trade and look for an opportunity to get long. If you're a day trader and you're looking for something similar, here's a neat little trick you can do in the day trading time frames, right? And the range bars gonna look pretty similar to this. Look for a break of this and then a pullback. Right, we got price action diving down here. Wait for a breach of this level, a pullback, right? Same thing you're looking for in the higher time frame. And then look at that as your entry reason up. I look at the highs for a target one. And then obviously the extension for a target two. So not a bad, not a bad day trading scenario either. Here's a look at it. The range of our charts don't give you too much more, but for you guys that like the range, you just look at the range bar charts as well. This is an eight range. So a little bit more, probably like a seven minute chart, nine minute chart. But that's an opportunity there as well. So cool stuff on Canada yen. All right, guys, forgive the lack of energy, but I'm re-recording this because I just blew up the initial recording. But what I want to show you was a follow up on the Canada yen analysis that we did this morning. I actually got involved in the trade here. Um, the day trade, the lower time frame trade, which is a smaller part of the bigger time frame trade. So as you can see, I have multiple positions on or what I'm going to do is I'm going to take multiple parts of my positions off at certain locations in the market. I'm going to take a conservative profit off if we run up to 10657s, and then I'm going to take my longer term trade position off at about what is it 107.25s, I believe it is. Now, I did want to mention this, right? My entry is a little bit late. I've had a, a busy morning and this wasn't a priority, no offense. Um, but I did want to get involved and show you guys because I know I didn't do a day trading video last week. And I know if, I don't know if we're going to have opportunity to do one this week, but I wanted to show you some type of day trading opportunity with an actual trade on. That way, you know, it's not like, hey, we're doing all this hindsight stuff and, and blah, 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 blah. So the reason for entry, as we spoke about in the live room, and, and hopefully I was smart enough to put in that analysis before this video, um, was smaller picture, uh, the breach of this structure shelf, the retest of structure to higher, high, higher close should have been the entry. Um, again, I'm a little bit late there just because, again, I was doing other stuff. And for the bigger picture, I don't even know if my chart's still up. Here we go. For the bigger picture trade here on the four hour, right? It was the pullback after our consolidation. So we had this period of consolidation right here, break and close above it, pull back in the structure, and then looking for a move to 107.25, where we did all types of Fibonacci and volume analysis and whatnot. So hopefully I don't blow up the recording this time, and I apologize for whatever I left out, um, but this is frustrating. Um, but I'll come back and I'll keep you guys updated, win, loss, or draw. All right, tuning back in for another quick update, you can see that we almost made it to our first targets. We ended up kind of consolidating right before that VS1 level. Now, this is a gift and a curse. The bad thing is, obviously, consolidation right before hitting targets is not necessarily a good thing. You'd love to hit targets first. Um, the good news is, though, if we do end up consolidating and then breaking out to the upside of uh, from this bullish flag pattern, um, moving stops to break even is going to be in a much better place. It did have some concerns with moving stops to break even and giving enough breathing room for the, the move to potentially continue for the longer term target. If we are able to hold this level break out to the upside, we have a nice little structure shelf, which should act as a supportive level of structure for that future movement. Again, if it happens. So I'll come back once again. Uh, we'll see how this plays out. Hopefully I'll have some good news for you guys. 
All right, guys, sorry about the voice in the middle of eating some lunch, but you can see target one achieved here on the Canada Yen. Dealt with a little bit of a pain, a little bit of a deeper retracement than what we initially hoped for, the consolidation. But remember, our stops were below this previous level of structure, so we were never in any type of danger, right? To kind of quote one of my favorite sessions from Dr. Brett Steenbarger is that we may have been in a sense of stress to see price action come so close to our targets and then dip back below and put us back in a negative but we were never in a sense of distress meaning we were never in a sense where we had to panic or make any type of emotional reaction because we trusted our stops and we knew that we had them in a safe place so now that we've achieved target ones we've broken and closed through our vs1 level that's that red box um, stops are moved to break even right this is a risk-free trade meaning that there is no possible way we can lose money aside from some crazy type of wild gap right knock on wood and now we're looking to achieve target twos which you remember are up at um 107.25 so that's going to be the bulk of our move so happy that this occurred now i've got a meeting to head to so i can i can get my one cancels the other on meaning that i don't have to manage this at all um and we'll come back and see if we ultimately hit target twos if we get stopped out for break even or if we kind of get stopped out for a trail anywhere in the middle but good trade so I want to give you guys a quick update on the trade. As you can see, it came back down, got me stopped out for break even on the second half of my position. So not a bad deal. Made about 20 pips or so on the first half of position. Didn't necessarily get the follow through on the second half, but still a positive trade. And the cool thing about this is that the higher time frame idea is still in play. So depending on what happens overnight tonight, um, we may come back tomorrow and get a secondary chance in this, I guess a primary chance or a first opportunity from a swing trading perspective, but maybe a secondary trading opportunity from the lower time frame perspective. And that's something I haven't mentioned in a lot of these videos, but one of the cool things about day trading, especially if you're day trading, but you kind of have a, a general idea of what's going on on the higher time frames as well. You're going to get multiple opportunities to get involved in the same move. So you've seen us do it before where we've kind of marked out areas where we say, hey, we've got a 200 pip range to the bigger area that we're looking to go to. And our job is to take advantage of every single opportunity that we can take advantage of within that area. And sometimes that means you get in one trade that runs up all the way to a million pips. Sometimes that means you can get a three get involved in three or four different trades in that same area and have different opportunities on different days. So we'll come back tomorrow. Probably won't record it for you guys because I only do about one of these a week. Um, but we'll see if we can reset. And if it's still in play, well, we'll have another opportunity to make some more money.